Hey everyone, Reflected here with my friend Baltic Dragon, and today we're going to talk about the popularity of DLC campaigns, or the lack thereof. We've been under the impression that the interest in DLC campaigns is dropping, uh, and we were wondering if that's true, and if so, why? So we posted in one of our Facebook groups and got a f lot of valuable feedback from the community, and uh, there were some recurring patterns there, so in this video we'd like to address them. I don't think anyone understands better the shortcomings of the DCS AI than us who work with it every day. So in a way, you're preaching to the choir. We agree that the AI needs a lot of work, and ED has announced the new AI GFM general flight model, which is supposed to solve most of these problems. I really hope so, and I'm looking forward to it very much. Furthermore, we know that they're also constantly working in the background on improving current AI behavior. First of all, a lot of people mistake us for the AI programmers. Campaign makers have no access to the AI code. We tell the AI what to do, but how it does it is in the core of DCS. If there's a problem, it needs to be reported to the relevant person, preferably with a track showing the issue so they can fix it. If an AI crashes into you on the taxiway, there's no drop-down menu in the mission editor that says crashing the player, yes or no. There's a takeoff from ramp 5 and that's it. And even that's not so simple because AI relies on the wind direction and strength and not any option that we can use to tell them what to do. Often, the mission maker can find a workaround to cut the bug out of the loop. But that's not always possible and definitely not sustainable. We're doing our best to keep our missions 100% working at all times. And when we can't, due to a core bug, we need your help to flag it to ED so they have more sources for the report. This being said, while we're all waiting for the new GFM, I think it's still possible to live with the AI's idiosyncrasies. After a few missions, you'll know what to expect, and then you can game the game, so to speak, anticipate these things and they won't cause that much issue. Of course, we'd all prefer an AI that flies more like a human, but that is supposed to be in the works already. Yeah, this is an interesting one. I uh, see where you're coming from. Free time is limited, our lives are busy, and it's hard to dedicate a few uninterrupted hours to this hobby. However, the more realistic a mission is, the longer it will inherently be, and there's no way around that. We couldn't possibly provide the same value in a 20 minute mission, so that's not a solution. Many of you mentioned the save game functions, capable stages, hot starts, etc. Okay, let's begin with hot starts. I and many other players hate them. Fortunately, DCS has a start engine cheat key. You press it and it will automatically start the aircraft for you. Easy. No need to have different campaign versions for that. As for skippable stages, it's very difficult with the current campaign engine. It's only possible if we make and maintain different versions of the same mission. Cold start, then spawn behind the tanker, then add the IP, etc. And we just can't possibly maintain this many missions. There's 12 to 14 in a campaign, and it's already a lot of work. Now there would be 30 to 40. And it doesn't account for what your cockpit settings were when you finished the last stage, how much fuel you had, or ammo, ordnance. It's always a clean sheet. So with the current engine and mission editing tools, we only have terribly cumbersome workarounds. A lot of extra maintenance in exchange for very limited functionality. This is why, in my campaigns, I'm not stepping one single foot into this rabbit hole. I'm sorry. But I do agree that it would be great to have a save game function in DCS. So it would record the position of every unit, all their tasks, all the flags that have been on in the game, all the parameters, so that you could save it and continue where you left off. That would be truly amazing, but it needs to come from ED. It's not something that we can just do in the editor. Even some kind of a checkpoint system would be most welcome, uh, while we're waiting for a save game feature. We're talking to ED about this and they're very receptive, but we have no illusions that things will take some time to be implemented. Now another option is just to divide longer missions into two or three parts like I did at the end of the Raven 1, but we'd love to hear from you if that's an option, as some people like to fly long sorties and complain when these are cut into two or three pieces. I'd just like to add one more thing. No campaign mission 
ever took me more than one hour, one and a half max. If you don't have the time, use the quick start cheat key, then use time acceleration when nothing interesting is supposed to happen and you're transiting to the target area. Two to three times acceleration can go a long way, but you can still fly the plane. Hey, I can even fly formation like that. And if you can't afford being shut down and refly the mission, just set yourself to immortal in the general settings. Yeah, they are possible. But what people don't understand is that it's not an extra few clicks in a scripted single player campaign, but a fork in the road, right at the start. If you want to make a campaign that is cop and multi crew, you have to build it as such from the beginning and sacrifice a lot of things that would only work in a single player mission but not in a multiplayer one. It's a whole different ballgame. Complex scripted campaigns cannot be turned into multiplayer, it doesn't work like that. Half the triggers wouldn't work, and the other half would need to be set up in a different way. So that's a complete redesign from scratch. Sadlo had a great video about this and he explains it much better than I just did and you'll find a link into it in the description. Yeah, on top of what Baltic just said, I'm a single player guy. I never fly in multiplayer. I don't know how that works, I'm not the right guy to make such a campaign. Yes, there is demand, I see that, just like there would be demand for a Vietnam map, but I'm still not gonna make that map because I'm not the guy for the job. Scripted single player campaigns are what I'm good at. So if you're a multiplayer guy, I encourage you to start experimenting with the mission editor and maybe you can come up with something much better than I ever could. And apparently there would be great demand for your product. I understand that every player is different. Some are here for the fun jump in the cockpit and shoot stuff in 5 to 10 minutes. Some others are complete sim nerds like me and want to simulate pre-start checklists that have no practical importance in DCS. Some are new to the given module and are just figuring out how to fly the damn thing. Some others are seasoned experts knowing every switch and system like the palm of their hands. I think it's obvious that a campaign cannot please everyone. It's either going to be too difficult for some or too boring for others. My main drive and motivation to build campaigns comes from wanting to create scenarios that are as realistic as possible, to bring the sim as close to reality as I possibly can. This is the number one added value of my products, to teach people about history and how things are or were done in real life. I completely understand that it's not for everyone, and yes, you need to master the aircraft before jumping into the campaign. Just like in real life they wouldn't put you into a Tomcat and let you fly an Alpha Strike at night with 3-4 hours of flying experience. So easy and short campaigns are not something I can help you with. There is some great content out there, some of them come with the modules for free, air start, instant action missions and also training missions that are meant for those who just bought the module and want to learn to fly. But you can't fill both shoes. It's like going to a burger place that has 5 stars on TripAdvisor and ordering a vegan burger with no bun. Yes, you can do that, but you're completely missing the point of the burger place. And some would even give it a 1 star review because it wasn't good. Of course it wasn't. So I do understand that my campaigns are a niche within a niche. But that's who I am, that's what I do. If it's something you also like and enjoy, that makes me extremely happy. But if you're here for different reasons, that's cool too. Everyone is entitled to enjoy DCS the way they want. But if you're picking the wrong tool for the job, don't blame the tool. I think I'm on the same board as reflected. For me, the DCS is a study sim and needs to be as realistic as possible. And not everyone likes it. However, I do see a big value in a good and fun training campaign. Currently we have two Speed and Angels and my Reflected with Paco and this one is amazing and my Iron Flag for the 8 and C. And looking ahead I'm working with Hosel and Jello on the third part of Raven 1 which will be a purely training campaign for the Hornet but with all the bells and whistles of a good story and interesting characters plus the amazing experience of two great fighter pilots in real life. Um, and next I'm looking for doing the same for the Strike Eagle. Uh, I know there are plans by one of the other third party devs to make uh, the same for the Viper, so this will be coming and hope you'll all enjoy them. 
All right. Thank you so much once again for sharing your feedback with us. And I hope we managed to answer some of these questions and concerns. Don't forget to subscribe for further campaign updates. Our new Hornet and Viper campaigns for the new Cola map are coming along real nice. And we can't wait to share them with you. All right. See ya.